Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem single element in a sorted array. We're given a sorted array of integers, maybe like this one over here. There will be two copies of every number in the array except for one of them and that's the one that we want to return. So there's going to be two ones, two threes, two fours, but there's a single two and that's the value that we want to return. It's pretty easy, but the catch here is that we want to do this in log n time and constant space. Are there any algorithms that you know that would satisfy this? Well, I can think of one and it is binary search, but it's not going to be as straightforward as a typical binary search but let's try to make some key observations that can get us to the optimal solution. The idea behind binary search is that we have a left pointer and a right pointer, and this decides our search space. Initially, we have no idea where that target element could be, so we have to search the entire array, but we'd like to be able to eliminate half of the array every iteration of like our loop. So maybe we would look at this element. Is this the target element? Well, how do we know if three is the target element or not? Well, because our array is sorted conveniently for us, it's really easy in constant time. We can look at any element and determine whether it's the target or not. That's by looking at the left neighbor and looking at the right neighbor, because we know for the target element, when we look at the left neighbor, it's going to be different than the target element. And when we look at the right neighbor, it's going to be different than the target element. But for every other element in the array, that's not the case. For three, both of its neighbors are not different than it. For this three, both of its neighbors are not different than it. For this four, both of its neighbors are not different than it. So that's easy enough. We initialize our mid pointer here. We look at the three, are both of its neighbors equal to it? Nope. So this is not the answer, but how do we know now? Should we start searching over here or should we start searching over here? At first, it seems it's impossible for us to know which side to go to, but actually there's a clever observation we can make. First of all, we didn't just eliminate this value. There are two copies of it, so we also eliminated the second value. Now it might look a little more obvious. And if it's still not obvious which side we should search on, let me tell you something. If we're given two copies of every single value, then let's say the size of our array is two times n, but we know in addition to the even values, there's gonna be a single one where there's just a single instance of it. So an odd number of times this value will be added or just one time. So this is the size of our array. It's always going to be odd. So which side should we search on? You can probably tell me at this point, but it's always going to be the side that has an odd number of values. So if this side has three values and this side has two values, well, we know this side is gonna contain only duplicates because it's even, but we know this side is going to contain the odd value or rather the unique value. So that's how we would decide it. So continuing our algorithm here, I'm going to set the mid pointer over here and let's also eliminate these values from our search space as well. So now I'm going to eliminate these values from our search space. Our mid pointer was over here, but now we're going to take our right pointer and shift it over to mid minus one. So it's going to go over here and then we're going to continue the algorithm. So the mid pointer now is going to be over here. Is this the target value? Well, it's not different than both of its neighbors. So no, it's not. And it's left neighbor is equal to it. So that's also not a part of the search space. So now we would set our left pointer to be mid plus one over here. So if our left pointer is over here, now we would look at this guy. Is it different than its left neighbor? Yes, it's different than its right neighbor. Yes, it's the answer. And that's what we're going to return. And as you can see, this is just a modified binary search. So this uh, time complexity is going to be log n and the space complexity, we're not using any additional data structures, is going to be big O of n. Now let's code it up. 
So let's start with initializing our left and right pointers. The left pointer is going to be at the beginning of the array while the right pointer is going to be at the end of the array. And we're going to keep going while our left pointer has not crossed our right pointer. And then the first thing we want to do is compute the midway point. So you can either do left plus right divided by two with integer division. But believe it or not, this actually is a bug. Most people don't know it, and usually it doesn't matter for interviews, but the bug is that left plus right can overflow. So how can we get the midway point between the left and right pointers without possibly having these two added together overflowing? Well, to do that, we take the difference between right minus left. So this gives us kind of half of the size of our search space. And we take this value and we add it to the left pointer. Alternatively, we could also subtract it from the right pointer. But basically, this just says to get the left pointer, add half of the size of this subarray to the left pointer, and that will give us the midway point. Since we're subtracting these, there's no risk that it's going to overflow. That's just a minor point about binary search, but now let's continue. Let's first determine if we found our answer or not. So how do we do that? Well, we can say, if the number at mid minus one is different from the value at the mid index, and if the value at the mid index is different from the value on the right side of it, then we know we found our answer because it's different than both of its neighbors, so we return that mid value. One little bug though with this is that what if our index gets out of bounds? Well, for that, we can modify this slightly and say, before checking this, let's check that mid minus one is greater than zero. That's one thing we could do, but I'm actually gonna do the opposite. If mid minus one is less than zero, or if this whole thing, this part is true, then we know it's not equal to its left neighbor. That's what we're trying to determine here. So if mid minus one is out of bounds, then of course it's not equal to its left neighbor because it doesn't have a left neighbor. And we'll do the same thing over here with the right side. If the mid plus one is equal to the length of the input array, or this is true, or it's equal to its right neighbor, then we're good. So either it doesn't have a right neighbor or it's equal to its right neighbor. In that case, we know we found our answer, so we return it. And the benefit of this is that it'll always evaluate the left side first. So if mid minus one is less than zero, it won't even evaluate this side because there's an or in between these. If this is true, it won't even check the second one because it knows this whole thing will be true. But pay attention to how we have the parentheses because it does matter in this case. We need this entire thing and this entire thing to be true. So now, if that's not the case, we need to figure out which side of the array has an odd number of values. So the easiest thing, in my opinion, is to just get the size of the left side of the array. Because we really only need one side of the array. If it's odd, then we'll search it. If it's not, then we'll search the other side. But how do we get the size? Well, the left side of the array is going to be m minus 1 if the value at m minus one is equal to nums at index m. Otherwise, it's going to be m. This is because if these two values are equal, then we want the number of values on, then we want the number of values to the left of m minus one. If m minus one is three, for example, like it's index three, how many values are on the left side of three? Well, the indexes of those values are gonna be zero, one, and two, so there's three values on the left side of the index three, so that's how we're getting this. And if that's not the case, that means that the value at index m is equal to the value at m plus one, because we know it's equal to one of its neighbors, and in that case, we would want all the values to the left of m, which is just going to be m. So one thing I wanna mention here is that what if m minus one is out of bounds? Well, in Python, that would be negative one. Zero minus one is gonna be negative one. And in Python, negative one actually does work. It will though just look at the last value in the array 
which will be different for sure because our array is sorted. But in most languages, you might need to have another check here. I'm just mentioning that for the people who don't use Python. But using this left size, we can say if the left size modded by two evaluates a true, meaning there's an odd number of values on the left side, then we say right pointer is going to be M minus one because now we want to search the left side. Otherwise, we are going to say left pointer is equal to mid plus one because we want to search the right side. That's the entire code. We don't have to put any return statements out here because we are guaranteed that there's a solution. And if there is, we're going to return it right over here. So now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.